Welcome back to the least professional StarCraft 2, also known as Bronze League Heroes, where we've jammed in four times as many players as usual in one of the most ridiculous games of StarCraft 2 that I've ever seen. Let's quickly introduce our heroes. Well, starting with Zero, the Yellow Terran. Over to his left, Liquid Lizard. The Pink, the Protoss, Fire Pop. And last but not least, Tom Taku in the green. And the northern team. We have Wild in the red. A purple Terran. Blue Protoss Chaos. And last but not least, our only Zerg player. It is Wizard. So. If you've been looking at the best of the best, but you're excited to see the best of the rest, it'd be awesome if you could like and maybe even subscribe. It's been a while since we've seen these top-tier, low-tier matches. And, Jimmy, what are we... What? 1,379 likes on this video, on this cast, on this match you should probably empathize a little more with. And I'll cast another one. I'll probably do it anyways if we get some good games for the fans. But thank you for watching hopefully you've had a good day so far and hopefully it's about to get a little bit better four versus four a grand total of five protoss two terrans and one brave zerg as the reaper from zero comes across the map and starts at wait okay there are two bases within the main base we're on of course a lenny conclave which is one of the maps for 4v4 i will assume the probes all have to be pulled. Those classic probes. No, this isn't StarCraft 1 versus StarCraft 2. He's just using the classic skins. Zealot comes out to deal with it. So far, no other real aggression besides the fact Liquid Lizard has expended in not one, not two, but three different locations, including... Wait, is that just one gold base? There's like gold bases right down the center by the oddly placed canals. But it does look like a relatively easy map. Easy is very strong. I, I thought I heard an oracle. And that's because I did. Two oracles come in from Fire Pop. As uh, the day just goes from bad to worse here for Wizard, who's just decided his uh, his brave people have become refugees from his own base. Uh, a couple stalkers able to drive away the oracles. But the mining time lost is uh, quite significant to start things off for the northern team. A gold base. I believe he floated it over here. Did... Pookie. Working title. Uh, Chaos. Opting for Twilight, Robo. And now four hatcheries for our Zerg. The Oracle's coming back. Another Reaper coming out. And so far, most players opting for some form of expansion. It's kind of rare to see in team games players have more than one expansion at all. As not many maps really uh, are conducive to it. But the Oracle's finding a lot of damage, but getting damaged themselves. Counter Air. A revolutionary idea from Wild, who was struggling with that exact concept earlier. Thankfully, though, uh, Fuki over here has Marines. And a lot of them. He has five, six barracks, some of which have add-ons, and is now working on his factory. And pings his turrets. No, no, don't build turrets, says Wild. Ah, yes, the backseat commander we have on the front lines here. Everyone knows him. Everyone's played team games with him. The player who obviously knows how to play your uh, your faction, your strategy, your game better than yourself while he's busy dying to air himself, which is an absolute certified uh, classic. Wild educating our Terran player on how to counter air while simultaneously losing approximately half of his economy to two oracles. All right. So, <clears throat> the supplies, pretty even across the board besides Wild and Zero, who are both down in the 40s while everybody else in the 60s or so. Actually, Fire Pop, uh, Fire Pop did not get Warp Gate with this Brood War looking base here. Um, but he does have all the production he could ever need as he chrono boosts out warp gate research, though he has hard walled himself in, which is an interesting choice. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the Zerg at the back. We have Hydralis Den 
Uh, hive is already on the way. Six and a half minutes in. He's about to finish a hive. Technically, you can transfer resources at starting at around the four minute mark in team games, though most people are pretty stingy about that. Here comes Fuki, who did not respond to Wild's, um, um, advice, but is providing him with turrets, the thing that, uh, he was recommended against. Meanwhile, triple Stargate. Actually, that's going to be five Stargates over here at Stargate Command for Liquid Lizard. And a fleet beacon on the way. Vikings for zero. The Viking invasion will continue. Pings across the board. The Ping Dynasty has been acquired, but the Viking raid is looking good. Meanwhile, Vikings back in the air. Stalkers will chase him down. Wild just straight up not having a good time, and I'm sure he's going to take that out in the chat takes out an overlord as there's not really any air units from the northern team to contest this Moracles making their way by uh viking still out in the midst of things oracles come in again chaos unfortunate that uh the oracles just fly right over his teammate into his base the stalkers coming up he's trying to target down some more of those probes gets a couple and gets out mass phoenix will be the choice okay seven stargate seems a little gratuitous though he does he does have four bases so liquid lizard with 3500 minerals a minute of, okay he's looking for more makes his way across the map viking shot down by the hydralisks thinking about landing the zerglings now well, zero doing a huge bout of micro with those three vikings unfortunately there's only so much to be done wild picks up some stalkers there's some dts in there as well i'm not sure if there's any detection from the northern team all right well the dts in solidarity also getting surrounded alongside oh wait there are overseers so easily able to dispatch it vikings coming in for another round the sensor towers from fuki here Doing a pretty great job of allowing his teammates to panic and ping and hope for support while their entire mineral line gets completely obliterated. The cannon's coming up. More pings, but Colossi and Stalkers will work through, but Liquid Lizard cuts his losses. Cancels the base. More getting picked off. Overlords. Uh, not allowed to be out there. The Hydras. The Phoenix count grows. He has 17 Phoenixes and 92 probes, and that's his entire... That's everything. Meanwhile, over... I guess on the other side, Zero is also quite a purist with only SCVs and Vikings. Stalkers from Fire Pop. Fuki, what does he have? Uh, one Thor, two Marauders, 62 Marines. Of course there's a Thor. Why would there be a Thor? And a ghost. He's also got a ghost. So, spooky. All right, Vikings still looking for an opportunity. The Protoss Civil War will continue, but the shield batteries and the cannons keep him at bay for now. Fire Pop looking for a flank. Try to target down a Colossus. Going to cost a lot of stalkers there. Fuki kind of making his way up. He has some turrets. Wild still trying to protect his base, mostly unsuccessfully. As the Vikings will target the Nexus, an ambitious play. Here come the Hydras, not starting the damage particularly early, and they get the Nexus. Every single Viking dies. Was it worth a Thor drop out of Pookie? Uh, quite a play. Dropping in for support, and the Marines in the low ground, but he targets down the Metavax. EMP. I, unfortunately, trickling units in like this is not... Uh, the rest of the Marines just stimming with nowhere to go. The Vikings on the high ground. The other Protoss army is still in an awkward spot. Um, the entirety of the army from Chaos is now trundling out. It looks the northern team actually has more combined supply overall. It's just the southern team has been relentless, if not particularly coherent in their various, what we're going to graciously call attack timings. All right, the Colossi stepping up to the plate, but thankfully, Colossi are hard countered by a moat, which is what we have here. Unfortunately, Blink Stalkers are not as more invade them. Oh my god, the Viking fleet! The Golden Armada, well, in this case, just the Orange Armada. 
More Colossi fighting. Vikings a little off the mark. Colossi getting knocked down by the Vikings. Stalkers taking out Nexi. A couple zealots banging on the door as well. I don't even know how they got there. But the Vikings just shot out of the sky by dozens of phoenixes. How many? He has 42 with 102 probes. Meanwhile, down goes a command center to the Nidus swarm of SC Wizard. I didn't even hear the Nidus. The stalker is still going to work. Scans, who knows where those are? Vikings, those are, yes, Zerglings underneath. If Zero's Vikings will protect. Meanwhile, oh god, those ghosts could counter so many. Assuming they were still alive. But the stalkers are still in the main. Fire pop down to 40 supply. Zero at 46. The southern team really struggling to deal with all of this aggression now. The northern team held against the various and somewhat confusing attacks and now just has the unit count. The DTs will eventually eviscerate the Hydras, but not before every single probe at this expansion is taken out for Tomtaku. Another fleet beacon is on the way. Buki now working on plus three. I'm not even going to try to keep up on the upgrades. It's not, not important. Shields. More shields. So many shields. Meanwhile, the lurkers have a foothold. They have a lot of feet, too. So it's quite a strong grip. But here come 44 phoenixes. And also some vikings. The vikings less relevant here. Can he actually... He's thinking about fighting this. With any cover, he may be able to do so. Picking off the edges of the Hydralis. Some more zealots and stalkers making their way by. And wow, a wall of cannons up against Vikings on deck. There's no shield battery overcharge, but here come the Phoenixes to lift away all his problems and knock him down dead. And there's just not nearly enough anti-air underneath this in order to deal with it. Able to pick up individual marines with plenty of energy left over, but there's stalkers at the back to the south side. The Vikings are trying to chase them down the old-fashioned way. And the EMPs finally land and the energy wiped out of the vast majority of those phoenixes. There's still enough to keep working on this, but with the shield stripped away, the phoenix count is starting to tumble dramatically. Meanwhile, more bases are dying. Those are zeros. Oh, there's a wall of pylons. The cannons have been taken out. The EMPs did their work. The Phoenix is just invalidated by the existence of, like, three ghosts, just as it should be. Meanwhile, a single stalker getting chased down by an entire Denmark of Vikings and succeeding in... No, get back here. Nope. Oh, my God. He's microing so hard. He's got the most APM of his entire career, and he gets away. But he's been cornered. The Vikings take it down, finally. All it took was a minute and a half for 25 Vikings to chase down that stalker, but it's cleaned up. The Northern team, uh, Wizard has established quite a beachhead with the Nidus over to the right flank, though hasn't really pushed forward with it. There's still dozens upon dozens of Phoenixes in the Liquid Lizard fleet. Scan. Oh, yes, DTs. Actually, good tip there. EMP would also work. But down go the DTs. Phoenix is coming in again. Scan for good measure. Phoenix is over to the left flank. Meanwhile, here come the Lurkers, the Hydras, and some Infestors put into a cog cave of overwhelming thermal, thermal lances. And the Lurkers... Actually, does he not have Lurker range? He does. Uh, but the Colossus count is too damn high. Lizard, there's a fusion core! But what is he doing with it? I, I'm i not sure he did anything with it, but it's cool to have a fusion gun. There's like 17 beacons out there. It's unclear as we still go through, eviscerating the mineral line. Meanwhile, Vikings flying overhead that Nidus, intimidating it, covering for the Colossi, but here come the Void Rays. The, the Phoenix is still cutting through the backline economy for Liquid Lizard, but the Void Ray count will clear out the rest of the defenses at the front. And he, yes, he lights them up and melts through the rest. The Vikings from Zero will invade Wild's base yet again. The Phoenixes are being chased down, but there is literally no unit in the game that can actually chase them if they try to run away. The Vikings are slowly but surely tearing through what's left of the base. The probes. Oh my, the probes. Having, uh... Wild's probes have not had a good game so far. More Phoenixes in production. I see some Tempests in there, a whole bunch more. Oh, but the Fungals catch the Vikings and knock down a bunch of them. 
Meanwhile, Tempest being chased out of the Stargate, wishing it was never produced. The Vikings are chasing the Phoenixes, and and good for him not using the Soveto Army Hockey. Otherwise, another 20 Phoenixes we find through static defense. Fire Pop loses another Nexus. The Stalkers blink in, but the Void Ray is burning them out. More Phoenix lifts. Chasing things down. And the game's 17 minutes in. It's still unclear. We're nowhere closer to determining the conclusion. It feels like the Southern team has a lot of momentum. But their supply does not reflect that. Just because they're being aggressive doesn't mean they're following it up with anything. Liquid Lizard has 12,000 minerals in the bank. But he's maxed out. Maybe sharing would be caring here. But... Zero, on the other hand, constant Viking aggression, but only 88 supply in total. The Fungals catch the majority of the Phoenixes, lock them down, and the Hydras are able to finish off much of the rest. The Vikings also here out of solidarity. Meanwhile, Stalkers to the, to the front. Wild managed to take the gold base. He's also long distance mining from his teammates' expansion, because of course he is. That's the kind of team player he is. Meanwhile, Fuki here with nearly maxed out Terran. 3-3 is done. EMP's whipped all over the place. Nuclear missile in the production tab. The Vikings are caught as playing with fungal fire. And more Vikings taken down conveniently the edge of the map. A nuclear launch is detected as he fires up to the high ground. But Fuki with a maxed out Terran army. <sighs> Not much to hit here, a few unlucky probes, but he's gonna use that to clear out the cannons and potentially just dive in with the medevacs. How cinematic, and a night is warm as well. Cover from the Tempest, and the Marines have landed in the Protoss base, and there's almost nothing to re Oh, well, okay, maybe 10 Colossi are enough to respond to this. <laughs> the Vikings try to come back to defend, but 10 Colossi will incinerate swaths of marines and the medevacs only barely get away are there even disruptors in there no i thought i saw them for a second i think those are archives but here come the vikings from the left flank the ghosts underneath where's spooky's microing vikings but the ghosts well the ghosts are actually kind of good against them but he's so busy microing the vikings he's not landing the emps the vikings continue forward but the ghosts are actually just kind of winning the fight there too is there anything happy on the other side still Vikings working on those Colossi. I don't know how many were taken down. A general glance at the supplies to the south. Bottom of the screen, not the south. Well, kind of both, but shows the northern team still with a, an overall supply lead. And this Terran army as well with uh, air support. Oh, a bold nuclear missile from an uncloaked ghost. Some pings coming out. I, I think they spotted it there. It is just kind of on the open field, so it's not too hard to see that little dot. The nuke lands. Deterring everyone nearby. But now we have to determine whether the south will rise again or if the northern team will finally put them down. Liquid Lizard is the only player with over 100 supply, and his supply is almost entirely in Phoenixes which is a uh, tenuous investment at the best. The, Vi the Phoenixes pick up a tank. The Ghosts, more pings. A few DTs are slicing through the production for Fuki here. Gonna make it harder. He's down to 133 supply, but a nuke. Unfortunately, the cannon is firing at the Ghost that is currently nuking, which is possibly worst case scenario. and will likely take it out the moment before the nuke lands. Unfortunate. Meanwhile, ultras! But there's no detection! The DTs are just slicing through. They gotta be careful not to be in the way of the lurkers where they get incidentally killed. But the DTs are slicing it up. Most of the Northern Army is here. Going to team colors for a moment just to get a better gauge of things. DTs cleaning it up. Hydras, oh my god, SC Wizard down to 92 supply! And, uh... As these armies slowly but surely get whittled down, is there storm? Well, we're about to find out. Where are the storms? There's so many ghosts, but that doesn't necessarily make the difference. The Templar! The Templar! Wait, whose team is he on? Oh, that's his teammate. Never mind. He wouldn't be storming his teammates' units, at least not right now, when they're winning. He kind of feels like the player who would be if he felt like they were losing them. I'm just putting that out there to try to recover. Ugh. <sighs> 
The reinforcements taken down. Liquid Lizard has lost all of his stargates. He's still got 10,000 minerals in the bank. DT's taken out another base. Fuki has almost nothing left. The minerals are mining out. With only... Uh, on 4v4, there's only so many bases. Oh no, the, the Phoenix is finding a lot of success. The Ghosts not landing their EMPs. Fuki trying to deal with things back at home. There's a single... No, wait, he was cleaning up DTs. And there are the MPs on to the Phoenixes, and they'll be shattered. A single Colossus, more EMPs, Cloak Ghosts, more pings. I'm not clear. It's not clear who's pinging. Oh, his teammate. Wild, un unfortunately, not supporting his Terran teammate. He's going to rebuild. I think Lizard is reset entirely. The tech tree completely chopped down. Oh no! Zero for the first time in his three-game StarCraft II career. Okay, it's probably longer than that. Has tried to make Marines. Unfortunately, they are entirely unupgraded. Without Stim Combat Shield, though he is getting plus one in Stim right now. The Southern team is all under 100 supply, whereas SC Wizard is maxed out. He's got a hatchery in his teammate's base, of which he's lo kind of long-distance mining. The DTs cut down on both sides. The minerals are almost entirely gone. How many drones? 80 drones. So Liquid Lizard still has enough economy. Storms all over his own army. Trying to kill the Marines, but killing himself as well. I'm not... I, well, Archon's piling in. Scans will finally clean up the DTs. Archon's pummeling the Marines. Down goes the medevac. Zero, try and recover. Liquid Lizard adds 10 gateways into production. The production tab getting pretty empty now, though. Fuki is going to expand to the base of Fire Pop, which is some of the only minerals left on the map. As we're nearly mined out, Archons of uh, both sides jammed into the barracks. Zero taps it out. That's one down. Three remain. SC Wizard, our only Zerg, has 200 supply. Everyone else is under 100. Liquid Lizard, I don't think, is gonna... He doesn't have Warp Gate! He committed so much! He put all his money into the Stargates, and now he has nothing for the Warp Gates. What a scandal. Hashtag Gate Gate. And, uh... The Zerglings are overrunning the base. And unless Liquid Lizard, who has plus... Is he gonna rebuild? He's building at Twilight. He wants to go to charge lots, but he has no upgrades. It looks like Fire Pop also still going. He has DTs, and there's an unreliable amount of scans. There's only two orbitals on the team on the other side, and I don't see any observers. So, yeah, Tom Taku take it out. They need scans from Fuki, but one of his orbitals is burning, which means the DTs. Oh, he finally found some. Of, he found an observer. The Archons will be taken down. But here, more charge lots on the way. Liquid Lizard can rebuild one gateway army. There's really... There's a few more minerals on the map. But the, the problem is... Oh my god. <laughs> the problem is... There's no... There's no more... Re well... There's really no more resources. I say that, but they're continually... There's resources all over the place. They're just not consolidated in a way that can be... Oh. He's trying to expand, but his teammate's in the way. He gets out of the way. There's long-distance mining. Eilons scattered throughout. I'm hard-pressed to see Liquid Lizard turning this around. Carriers have arrived. Still no warp gate from Liquid Lizard. Don't want to waste too much money on that. More Chrono Boost from Fire Pop, who will warp in some Stalkers. Wild has two carriers. Lizard is building some Stalkers. Does he have Blink? He does. He can Blink up to his teammates' high ground and potentially take out the carriers. He will. Going straight for the pylons. The carrier's distracted and will be taken down. SC Wizard has zero gas despite this maxed out army because his teammate if his teammate shares control i believe he can mine from his gas geysers which is a weird quirk there's full gas geysers over here as well 
what are the upgrades on the Zerg? Maxed out. Now that's quite an army. That should be the end. But... There's a dream. Mass Zealot. Unupgraded. That's a terrible choke point to be coming down into Hydralis. Need detection, says the man with orbital commands. He's down to one orbital command and it's currently flying. Liquid Lizard has spent... The bank is completely exhausted. The Zerg hero is all that's left. A single lurker could be a deadly number, as there is absolutely no detection. Trying to chase it down. The battle continues, but getting down this ramp, there's... He's got 34 zealots, 19 stalkers, but neither of them have any detection. Liquid Lizard has not rebuilt his base and is being revealed. He technically doesn't have enough to do so. He's just now getting warp gate, but that's a bit on the late side of things. Fire pop taps it out. And Liquid Lizard. Well, there's still a lurker down there. The last battle as he trickles down the ramp past his stalkers. The lurker doing damage to most of the army simultaneously. Oh no. It's a disaster! The Protoss will be slaughtered! And the Northern team, under the brave and charismatic direction of the Team Captain Wild, will find victory. <sighs> well, of all the games I've ever seen, that was certainly, certainly one of them. We saw hundreds, thousands, of units killed. Some heroes, some villains, and some people who were just happy to be here. And hopefully, hopefully you count yourself as one of those. And hopefully this made your day a little bit better. Something a bit different, but it looked like a fun game to take a look at. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you got the means and motivation, be also check out Patreon uh, or YouTube membership. But I hear liking and subscribing is still free for now. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.